It can't because everything in the physical plane is open for interpretation and subject to change. That's why the scriptures say the material world is evil. Not because it's a, a, a demon or a bad person. It's evil because it is untrue. That's why it is an illusion. Okay. Now this ties into what I'm about to talk about here. This ties into these patterns and this frequency and making your life better. This ties into that because you have to first learn and recognize truly deep in your heart that this shit don't matter. You have a definition for things, but that's not the true definition. It's, it's your definition of reality is how you set up the framework for how you operate in this playground. Okay. This is why it's so important to have some control over how you see the world. Who has defined your world for you? Did you do that? Or did you receive your definitions from someone else? Who told you that Jesus was good? Who told you that Jesus was bad? Who told you that white Jesus was bad? Hmm? Who told you that chemtrails was bad? Who told you what a chemtrail is in the first place? You see what I'm saying? When we take these definitions and these words, they come with the deliverer's definitions. This is why it's so important to do your own research and cross-reference so that you can start collecting pieces and connect the dots for yourself. If you don't do that, you're living in someone else's world. So... We talk about the fact that everything is open for interpretation, that nothing has inherent meaning by itself, right? Which means that everything can be defined as you want it to. The situations that happen in your life, good or bad, you're the one who has the responsibility of defining those and how they affect you today, right? So you could have had something happen in the past that was very awful and you may still be holding on to its effects, but you can right now change the parameters of that situation change how it affects you. You can do that. That's the power that you have. And you'll notice that if you change how that situation has affected you, you start to change your future behaviors. You can literally turn something that was meant to harm you into something that can be the greatest help that you've ever experienced. People have done this countless of times. I've done it repeatedly. You've probably done it as well. Say for example, you go to school and you fail a test. One person can sit there and look at that as the worst thing ever. You know, you're stupid. You're, you're a terrible person. You failed. You're not good enough. You, you're not built to go for the career path that you want. You can go down that train of thought if you want. Or you can flip that around and say, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to study some more. Or maybe it was an ego crush. You know, hey, maybe I'm not as wise as I thought in the subject matter. I can use this as an opportunity to improve myself. It all depends on how you define it. So reality is all based on the relationships that you have with what's in your perception and how you arrange it. This is, this is really what we're learning when we study the science of Kabbalah. It's not about some mystical spheres out there in space. We're learning how to redefine relationships to everything, everything, including God, including your body and how you see yourself and everything. It's just like math. A lot of people complain, and I even had this complaint when I was a kid, why are they teaching us math? We can't use this in the real world, this is stupid. But we missed the point. The point isn't about the numbers. It's about learning how to solve problems. That's what we learn math for. We're teaching our brain high level problem solving. And that's the same thing that's going on with Kabbalah and Tantra and all these other spiritual systems. That's why it is a system. It's a system with rules, not rules to keep you from doing something, but rules to keep you in a zone where you can learn, where you can learn about the patterns that exist. 